then he has a very special mark on his chest Sri Lakshmanam Lakshmanam means the mark and Sri means goddess of fortune who is consort of the Lord and is never separated from him but in the Lord's body also he has a special mark to signify that there is supposed to be one golden streak on the left side of his chest and that is the mark of Lakshmi Devi in Vakuntha everybody has four hands and they all appear like Lord Vishnu they have Sai Jamukti but Lord has special mark on his body this mark of Lakshmi Devi this is not found in anybody's body then he has Kostubha Ratna Kandharam Lana Lakshmi then he has one very nice gem hanging from his neck and that is called Kostuba gem so this gem is there on his breast and this gem signifies the living entities that, as it will be described in 11th canto so the Jiva Shakti has three types of potency Tatastha Shakti Antaranga Shakti and Bahiranga Shakti so these jivas, the living beings, they are represented by this locket which he wears. It also signifies that the jivas are very dear to him. Therefore he keeps them in their heart like people. They wear some necklace and like to keep a photo of him or they love. So like that Lord also keeps the kostuva which represents the jiva shakti. And he has a very nice garland made of flowers. And these flowers have the characteristic that they never fade. Usually the flowers they fade after one day or two days. And these he says is Amblan Lakshmiavan Malaya Achitam. The forest flowers. Flowers from the forest, not from anybody's garden, which are naturally growing. So that he wears, which is called Vanmala. Vibhushitam Mekhlaya Anguli Ekail Mahadhanail Nupur Kankanadi. And he has a very nice belt on top of his dhoti, that yellow dress. And in his fingers he has got very nice rings. And these are very precious. They are also studded with gems. Then he has Nupura Kankanadi. For the hand he has uh, ornaments, Kankan. And also Nupura for the feet. Snigdhana la kunchita nila kuntalai virocha manana asapeshala. Then his hair are very beautiful. One of the beauty of a human body is hair. Many uh, other species also have hair, like dogs have hair, and the bears have hair, monkeys also have. But human beings have the special. Their hair on the head, they grow unlike anyone else. And you can keep them and dress them nicely. So these days there is a lot of styles for hair. Now they put gel and make them stand up or color them, dye them. It's a very big industry for the hair. But Lord's hair, they are very nice by nature. First of all, they are snigdha. They are not dry, but they are into it as if you have put some oil and therefore they are very glossy, shiny and amala means no dirt as if he had just shampooed them. <laughs> so without shampooing his hair are always shampooed. And they are curly, not straight. 
so he doesn't have to go to a hairdresser to get them curled the naturally curled kunchita neela kuntalai and they are very dark in color and the rings are falling on his face virochamana hasa peshalam and his face has a very nice smile peshala means very attractive and beautiful smile so this description is given so that one can <coughs> become attracted to the lord and meditate because in the beginning one does not see the form so how to meditate so this form is explained here and then if you start meditating then the form will become visible to you in your mind the lord will become manifest so another characteristic of the lord which is described here is that adina leela hasita ikshano lasad bhubhang sansuchita bhuri anamra that lord he is very gracious bhuri anamra immensely gracious he is very eager to give his grace to his devotees and how does he show this eagerness he shows by his these eyebrows he is also very expert in moving them so he is having bhubhang sansuchita bhuri anugraham by that he indicates that he is very pleased and ready to give his blessings to the devotee and he has a very nice playful smile and his smile is very generous means he is not miser when it comes to smile adina adina leela hasita ekshana so three times there is talk about his smile first he said prasanna vakram that he is very happy smiling and then he says anand hasha peshalam he has a very nice smile and now again he says leela hasita ekshana he is seeing the devotee he is having a smiling glance really speaking the smile is seen from the lips and somebody smiles then you know it from the lips but his smile is also seen from his eyes so he is describing that he is having a smiling glance and when he is having smiling glance he is also moving his eyebrows to indicate his happiness and grace on the devotees so if anyone who sees this person he or she is immediately captivated especially if it is a she because he is a man and very beautiful this is one of the characteristic of krishna that he is very pleasing to women although sometimes people cannot figure out whether he is a man or he is a woman many times people in the west they go to temple and they see krishna and they think what kind of female is she so he is very attractive very beautiful and now after giving this description sukadev goswami says ikshita chinta mayam enam ishwaram yavan mano dharanaya utishthate that this form of the lord is called here as chinta mayam that this is a form of contemplation because it is not that it has been installed by somebody or you have brought him from somewhere you contemplate like this <coughs> and then you keep on looking at this form till your mind becomes fixed ikshet chinta mayam ena ishwaram yavan mano dharanaya avatishthate so dharana means fixity till the mind becomes completely fixed and you don't want to take the mind away you have to practice this 
as in the beginning you may be able to fix your mind for a very short period maybe for 5 seconds 10 seconds if you try and then mind will go somewhere so this has to be practiced and continue doing it till the mind becomes completely fixed on this form and when that happens then he gives further suggestion what is to be done after that so first one has to contemplate on the form the way it is described so this is the guideline which has been given and the painters they read these things and they make nice paintings so it is given by a person who has seen the lord therefore it is real it is not just a imaginary thing of simply a product of somebody's mind so there is not much commentary on this but i will read what i was there maharatnani padma ragadini maharatna the word which was used in verse number 9 about the kirit the helmet and also kundal he has nice earrings which are supposed to be made in the shape of fish so these are the various gems such as padma raga which is a type of gem unnidram vikshitam hrit pankajam tasya karnika eva alayas patra yogeshvare rasthapito pada pallavo yasya tamiti tad bhaktan yogeshwaran api dhyaye niti bhav then he is describing that the yogeshwaras which means the devotees of the lord they meditate on the feet of the lord by keeping those feet in the heart which is like an open lotus flower so the lotus flower is compared to the house of the lord as if he is living there and he says that this signifies that one should also meditate on these devotees who have the feet of lord in their heart sri lakshmanam sri deva lakshma vamas tanor urdhva lakshmi rekha then there is a mark on the left side of the chest which signifies lakshmi devi the goddess of fortune tadyuktam pamadi vihito matvartiyo matratya the word lakshmanam is made from lakshma which is a root by applying na pratyaya from this sutra pamadi when you get lakshmanam कौस्तुभरतन तद्रथन हिरणमय सूत्र कंध्रायां यचितरी महाधनई बहुमूल्य अदर ऑर्नामेंट दिस बेल्ट एंड रिंग्स दे आर वेरी एक्सपेंसिव स्निग्धत्वादि विशिष्ट कुंतलोचम आनने यो हास तेन तेषण मनो एंड हिज फेस इज वेरी ब्यूटिफुल बिकॉज इट हेज ए वेरी नाइस स्माइल एंड द फेस इज कवर्ड बाय दिस लॉक्स ऑफ हेयर विच आर black shining glossy very nice adinam ati madhuryam ya leela hasitam tad yuktam ikshanam and his smile is very playful and it is very sweet ati adinam means very sweet and with the smile he is seeing उल्लसन उल्लास प्राप्नुवन भूभंगश्चेताभ्याम संसूचि भूरी अनुग्रह एंड ही इज वेरी हैप्पी हिमसेल्फ लॉर्ड बिकम वेरी हैप्पी बाय सीइंग हिज ओन डिवोटी 
and therefore he is moving his eyebrows to uh, show his grace to the devotee. Chintamayam chintayaiva avir bhavanta. And this form of the Lord, which a practitioner has to meditate upon, it is called chintamayam. Means it is made to appear in the heart by contemplation. And how long one has to contemplate till one's mind becomes fixed. That means there is a dharma. So, this beautiful description is given to the yogis who are recommended to meditate on the form of the Lord. And how this meditation has to be done further down, then he speaks the next words. That first to meditate in general over the whole body, but then it has to meditate, one has to meditate on the each limb of his body. So he said, Eke Kashongani Dhyanu Dhyanu Bhavaya Padadiyavad Hasitam Gadabhritaha Jitam Jitam Sthanam Apoya Dharaya Param Param Shuddhati Dhirya Thayatha Says that one should meditate on each limb of Lord's body. We should concentrate now each part with the mind and one should begin from feet. So meditation has to start from the feet and then go up onward up to the face. Yavad Hasitam Ganabhrata So not that one directly meditates on the face but start from the feet and as one will meditate then one's heart will become purified. So feet they signify servitorship. They signify surrender, meditation on feet. So that means first one must surrender to the Lord and because of that surrender, one will become free from material desires. And then one slowly moves up and comes up to the face. So this way, he has to become perfect on meditating on a particular part of the Lord. And by meditating on particular part of the Lord, those characteristics of the Lord which are signified by those parts will purify the heart of the meditating practitioner. Because we have various types of desires. They will be fulfilled. One will become then free and then you move up from there. Gradual progress. And ultimately one comes to the face then the heart has become completely clear. So basic material desire is to enjoy independent of God. This is the basic desire in the material world. The devotees they are also enjoying but they are not enjoying independently. They enjoy along with the Lord. And non-devotees they enjoy without God. So this meditation is to remove this tendency, this, this desire to enjoy without God. Because really speaking nobody can enjoy without Him. Therefore people suffer, they don't enjoy. They keep on trying and they always fail. They have to fail because constitutionally it is not possible to enjoy without Him. The so-called enjoyment in this material world is also an illusion. It is not real. Because all this enjoyment is nothing but getting freedom from the tribulations, the miseries. Mind is always under flux, change and thus there is always some headache, some problem. 
and when you try to enjoy means somehow or other you become free from that disturbance of the mind. The mind becomes concentrated on something. So that you call enjoyment. And that enjoyment is nothing but cessation of the disturbance. It is not a real enjoyment. Real enjoyment can come only from the Lord. Because he is a prasanna bhaktram. He is having this hasapeshalam. He is the source of happiness. There is no happiness anywhere else in the universe. So the real happiness, real pleasure comes only from the Lord. And therefore purification means that this desires to enjoy, they go away. And then mind becomes fixed. Therefore he said, jitam jitam sthanam apohiya dhariye. That when you become fixed on one particular part, say feet, and you are able to concentrate on the feet, the mind doesn't waver anymore. Then you give up the meditation on the feet and then you move up onto the shank and then to the knee and thigh and then hips and so on. So you will become expert on each part, meditating on each part and that expertise will purify your heart gradually. And after that only then the love will bloom. Asseva dhyanam aha ekekshaiti. Again, the meditation on the form of the Lord is described first in general, now specifically. Nu nishitam bhaviyat dhyayat. So, one must do this bhavana, this meditation, nishitam, certainly, with certainty of mind. Jitam jitam dhyanena abhyastam sthanam pada gulfadi apohi etyaktva param param jangha janvadi dharaye. And then when you, have, when you have practiced on a particular part of the body, then you abandon that and move on to the next one. From feet to the shanks to the jangha, the calves and then knees and so on. Swamana hai priyoja grahayet ityat. It means that you have to fix the mind on that. Yatha yatha dhishya shudhyati vishya lampatyam tyajati. As the mind will become purified, it will give up its attachment for the vishaya or sense of that. Lampatya means attachment. Means great attachment for sense objects. You hear something or you smell some nice food and immediately mind is captivated and wants to enjoy that sense object. So this desire will go away. Vishya vinivartante nirahana sadehini rasovarjan rasopyasya param drishtva nivartate so one will get superior traced by Param Drishtva, by seeing the Lord. And then this taste which we have for sense objects will go away. Otherwise we may avoid the sense objects, but the tendency to enjoy them remains inside. So purification means that you lose interest in them. Let the sense object, <coughs> sense object is not the problem. Problem is in the desire in us. When the desire is not there, then there can be sense objects around you, they will not bother you. If you have given up eating meat or smoking, you can go to a shop, maybe full of meat, it doesn't attract your mind. When you go to a restaurant where meat products are sold, food articles, you have no desire to eat them. But if you have the desire inside, then as soon as you even get a smell, or somebody is talking about it, then your mind will run from it. So he says, Vishya Lampatyam Tejati. Then the mind gives up that attachment 
Why? Because it is getting some nice taste. The higher taste, superior taste is coming. Tatha tatha dhari. And then you move on to the higher part of the body. Chitta suddhi tartam ye neiva dhyana tartam ye muktam. So this gradation of meditation which is prescribed here is according to the purity of the heart. As the level of purity increases, the level of meditation also increases. Beginning from feet to the head. Same was described in previous chapter about the cosmic form of the Lord. There also they began with padal, patalam padamulam. That Patala Loka, the lowest planetary system, is the feet of the Lord. So we start from that. Otherwise, if you don't follow this order, then it can create some other pathology, some other problem can come before the order has been prescribed. And for this reason, Sri Vishnath Chakrati Thakur writes, Tena Atyanta Ashuddha Chittasya Natra Adhikara. That a person whose heart is completely impure, he is not qualified to meditate like this. Like in our Sampradaya, there is great uh, rush to meditate on Radha Krishna and pastime, his Astakalam Leela. But really speaking, for that also you need Chitta Shuddhi. If the heart is not pure, then this type of meditation will not bring good result. Because if you try to take something for which you are not qualified, it can create a lot of problem. Like when a person falls sick, has malaria for a long time, the liver does not function, digestion system becomes very weak. So it can become so weak that you cannot even digest a strong medicine. Then you have to be given intravenous treatment. So if a person is so weak and you give him a heavy oral dose of medicine, then he will die with that. Medicine which is meant to cure can also kill if it is given to a person who cannot handle it. So similarly, here also he says that one whose heart is very impure, he should not take to this. He must go back to the previous meditation, that cosmic meditation. Kintu veras dharnaya meviti He says that he should meditate only on the cosmic form. And then only one should proceed to this one. This is the different stage. And even in this meditation, there are levels. Not that you immediately go to the last step. So this is very scientifically described here. That how this has to be followed. So if one wants to see result, as in science people do experiments and then they want to see the result as it is described, then you also have to follow the process. And if one does not stick to the process but wants to see the result as it is described, that will not happen. Like doing some uh, chemistry experiment, mixing chemicals and then trying to make another compound. So you have to follow the process which chemical has to be and what is the potency of the chemical and what is the catalyst and how it has to be added. Then only there is a reaction and compound is produced. But you try to do it according to your own mind and then see and then you expect the compound. It won't happen. So this is one of the problems these days in spiritual paths, spiritual societies, that they know the result that we have to get this ecstasy, but they don't follow the process or they jump to the 
final stage of meditation or whatever process is described at the advanced level then instead of getting the benefit they actually go down they meet an accident so one must uh, follow that that is the purpose of this description now we'll stop here Yes. Uh, this word Chintamani was mentioned as a Chintamayam. Chintamayam. Not Chintamani Pratavasana. Mm -hmm. Chintamani Jayati Sam Guru Yavirme. <laughs> Also, um, in these descriptions, is never there's never any mention of the Lord having a beard. Beard he does not have. But well, if he had beard, then he has to have a barber. <laughs> <laughs> then he has to have a blade. Then a shaving cream. So he does not want to deal with chemicals. spiritual form there is no beard. Mm -hmm. It's messy. Uh, how we can know on which level we are uh, to avoid the mystery? Somebody have to know. I don't know, but who knows? How you have to know? That also he will tell in the upcoming verses. But how do you know whether you have to do this one meditation or the previous one? Mm. It is coming. And about this uh, Pastuma gel that uh, is related to the jiva. Mm. And then it has a particular color or some... Color is not described here. Mm. Or maybe it has many colors, eight colors, different types of jivas. So this is uh, beginning the meditation at the feet of the Lord. Even on that stage the purity has to be there? Yes. Otherwise you go to the previous meditation. 